has a message that we would like to send to you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. In the beginning, the void, the darkness. Then light then life, and from life came man, joining the caravan for the long, slow journey through a world of discovery, invention, exploration. His marks, his milestones, stretch out through the centuries. His footsteps echo down through the corridors of time. Time, July 1969 in Florida, the footsteps the caravan quickened, the corridors shortened as man reached outside his world into another void. taking only a sideways glance at the reminders of that milestone. Reminders, images that vaguely jog our memory. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, aiming toward a planned liftoff time of 32 minutes past the hour, the start of our launch window on this the mission to land men on the moon. The countdown still proceeding very satisfactorily at this time. We time, it plays tricks on us. It smudges and blurs the sharp edges of reality. But we turn the trick and summon up our own reality, images, sounds, to help us remember. During the powered flight. The batteries all look good. The next time we go internal will be at the 52nd mark with those batteries, and they will remain, of course, on internal power during the flight. The lunar module, which has been rather inactive during these latter phases of the count, also is going on internal power at this time on the two batteries in the ascent stage and the four batteries of the descent stage. They came, one We're million of them, for, uh, to this place, drawn by the magnet of history in the making. The astronauts, the prime crew, were awakened at 4.15 a.m. Eastern Daylight and proceeded to uh, have a physical examination in which they were declared flight ready. They sat down for the normal astronaut fair on lunch day as far as breakfast is concerned, orange juice, steak, scrambled eggs, toast, and coffee. The target for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the moon at liftoff will be at a distance of 218,096 miles away. The astronauts departed from their crew quarters uh, after checking out their suits. They departed from the crew quarters at 6.27 a.m. and some 27 minutes later, eight miles away from the crew quarters at the Kennedy Space Center, atop the launch pad at Complex 39, 6.54 a.m., the commander, astronaut Neil Armstrong, was the first to board the spacecraft. He was uh, followed about five minutes later by Mike Collins, and finally Buzz Aldrin, the man who's sitting in the middle seat during liftoff, was the third astronaut to come aboard. The weather is uh, certainly go. It's a beautiful morning for a launch to the moon. We expect a temperature of about 85 degrees in the Kennedy Space Center area. We're still go on Apollo 11 at this time. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared.
got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Apollo 11, Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins. They and millions of others reached out and, in their own way, touched another planet. The images remind us that it happened, but not how it really was in the context of the times. George Lowe, one of the architects of the Apollo program, does remember. If you think back at the, the period of the 60s, they weren't very happy years in general. We had, uh, well, the ever-deepening involvement in Vietnam. We had uh, riots on the campuses, riots in Watson elsewhere, three terrible assassinations. A great deal of, of strife and turmoil in the country. And yet all of this was overcome by one single event, and that was Apollo 11. Uh, the decade ended with it. It was a fantastic adventure that I believe helped overcome all of the bad things of the decade. It uh, uh, represented Americans to ourselves and particularly to the rest of the world as we like to see ourselves and as we hope the rest of the world likes to see us. Some of it is now in museums, artifacts from an age of discovery. These strange looking objects, they're there as reminders that after all, it did happen. And it happened the way we remember. The facilities of Apollo, now silent and still. In Houston, mission control, the nerve center of manned flight operations. The chapters of space history, First Mercury, then Gemini, then Apollo, were written by the people who sat at these consoles. And these chapters of history came at us with breakneck speed. Christmas Eve, 1968, in the beginning, Apollo 8, the footsteps were quickening. A few months later, Apollo 9, the long years of preparation were contracting into days, hours, minutes the first manned flight of the lunar module, the Spider. Apollo 10, the dress rehearsal for the real thing. In five months, three missions, and in the seventh month, the payoff. Then, the celebrations. Images and the sounds fade in our memories, but some things we can't forget. Names, Apollo 11, Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins. Other names, Grissom, White, and Chaffee. They remind us that it wasn't all success and celebration. There was failure and tragedy. Early in 1967, the three crawled into the command module at Cape Kennedy for a test. There was a flash fire. All three died. After the shock came the long, painful job of picking up the pieces, learning the lessons, coming together for a common goal. 
the remains of the launch structure stand as a reminder that the goal was reached. These strange shapes, what do they mean? These towers of steel, what are they? Monuments or leftovers from some earlier age of discovery? In the long history of man, in the slow journey of the caravan, what point did these mark? Historian Arthur Schlesinger, I have no doubt at all that if posterity remembers the 20th century for anything, Historians 500 years from now, looking at the 20th century, it will be because it will be the century when man first began to break his terrestrial bonds and began the exploration of space. So that's it. As man learned, moved on, and discarded the earlier structures, he came to these. They are marked for further milestones, reserved for future missions, other reaches to other different voids. Historians five centuries from now will mark this century, this place, and they will further note that from the void life, man. It took eons to reach this point. But once there, the centuries and years compressed into days, hours, split seconds of exploration. The wheel, the engine, the airplane, they came slowly at first, then with increasing velocity. And then this, so huge, so powerful, so different that no ordinary modern name would suffice. They reached backward through antiquity to Roman mythology and they named it Saturn. Saturn, his father was heaven, his mother earth. organization, the mammoth machines, the incredibly detailed technical knowledge, the dedication. It was all harnessed, sharpened to a fine edge and focused. The program developed and matured. Apollo 17 was launched at night and even the old hands, the ardent veterans of the space program, couldn't help but feel the awe and wonder and excitement. the excitement of the split second of exploration, man doesn't stop to freeze the moment in history, to look at it and ask what it means. He simply lives it out. But in the Apollo program, on their way to the moon, they found a way to live out their strange moments in those strange spacecraft. It may be the peculiar nature of Americans to make history and to have fun in the making.